be able to get no such weather here. Let's see. It is 2715. Look at 
the tail here in the back. If you're going directly to the airport, look at the tail of the HSI. Uh-huh. That's the heading you're coming from. Uh -huh. So the bottom of the airplane, if you're going towards the airport, is where you're coming from, or the quadrant you're coming from. So northeast. So 43 miles to the northeast with information X-ray. Inbound landing Norfolk. So he knows you're landing in Norfolk. Now Class Charlie here has a lot of airports within Class Charlie. You got Oceana, you got uh, Newport News, maybe some small airports, private airports underneath the Class Charlie. So if you're going to a different airport that's inside Class Charlie, you got to tell him what airport you're landing. So what I would do is go Norfolk approach, November 77927 request. Norfolk approach, November 77927, say your request. Norfolk approach, November 77927, 42 miles northeast, information Sierra, landing Norfolk. He's going to say November 77927, squawk, 0304, identity. You do your squawk on the transporter, dum dum dum. He comes back to you and say, November 77927, radar contact. 43 miles northeast of Norfolk. Proceed on course, maintain VFR 1500. Copy that, Chef, for information, Zulu 05510. Zero zero. Wind 3203, three, visibility 10. Sky clear. Temperature 4, dew point minus 3, altimeter 3034. Turn right, turn left, 
because you're in class Charlie, you're in a controlled airspace, he can get rid of vectors. If some jet's coming in front of you, he may just turn you to the west and then let somebody squeeze in in front of you and then turn you back in. So it kind of depends on what the activity is. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I doubt there's going to be much going on there, so no problem. Any questions? No. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When do you use November? Uh, the, the first one, and we notice like in the, in, uh, like in the area, we don't really use November. We use just 77927. Oh, yeah, it depends. It's kind of what you want to do. Uh, here in the U.S., you can just say the airplane itself, you know, Skyhawk, Cessna Skyhawk, you know, Cessna Skywagon, you know, just regular Cessna. No, but you said November. On the end, we usually don't use that. I uh, usually don't use it. I, you know, I use it. I use it sometimes. Kind of depends on what I feel like doing. I guess you don't have Sometimes to. they say, say type of aircraft. They don't care about November or whatever it is. They want to know the type of aircraft you're flying. Then you can say Luscom or Lima 8. That's the actual, you know. So identified. any airport I fly to, I can still use 77927. Uh, it's giving me a note to check fuel, so I'm going to go ahead and point my head on into the fuel selector gauge, the fuel gauge, and we got about half a tank of gas in 28 minutes. Plenty of gas. Um, what, uh, what was the question? When, when do you say November? When do yeah, you I guess it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can say November. If you ask for a type of aircraft, you can say it. But, you know, I can just yeah, call initial right, contact. Yeah. yeah, I can call initial contact and say, yeah, you know, let's come November 77927 or whatever. change in the weather, sometimes they keep it the same. What if this would have been an uncontrolled airport? Need a transporter? No. Nope. What if that uncontrolled airport is inside Class Charlie? Underneath? Like Bayport? In uh, New York? Uh huh. You have Class Charlie Ice Lip and then uh -huh. Bayport is underneath there inside. Right? What happens there? Uh, nothing. You don't need a transponder. You saw you have to announce yourself to come in. Yeah. As long as you're underneath the layer, they have the exclusion there, you can just get in without a transponder. What if you want to talk to them and use the transponder so they can give you vectors in and go right in there? Can you do that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The guys plus Charlie it actually, you know, they, you know, they know what's going on better when you do that. This way, you, you know, they, they know you're coming in, so it's better for them. And then they'll give you clearance for Charlie. You can descend from 3500 all the way to Bayport or, you know, any airport within the class Charlie. And then they'll give you red vectors and assistance getting to that airport. Now, talking about Class Charlie airspace, what is the minimum visibility at Class Charlie airspace at night? At night? One mile? Minimal? Wait, one mile minimum. Uh, it's more than a mile, yeah. Three miles. Charlie, three miles. Three statue miles, as a matter of fact. Yeah, three statue miles. And what about cloud clearance um, at Class Charlie at night? How far you have to be from clouds? Let's go ahead and line yourself up with the, you see that bridge going right through Norfolk? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do flat plan and then select approach and activate it. You can start cheating a little bit to the left so we're within the lighter green, green line. Yeah, not, not too close, but you know, you see that road over there? That's 23, that's the road that takes you all the way over the bridge to Norfolk. So, to maintain within gliding distance,
distance, we'll stay a little bit east of where we are now. I like to say, five, uh, tell us from the right, 500 above the clouds, 1,000 or 1,500 below the clouds. No, but the ceiling, yeah. about the ceiling. You're pretty close, man, that's not bad, you see? Why do you need to maintain distance from clouds? Let's talk, let's think about it. Why do we need to maintain distance from clouds? Because you'll find it, so if you can't see. That's right, number one you can't see. And then it's turbulence, maybe? What's number two? What if there's IFR traffic inside the clouds? And then IFR traffic is popping right out of the clouds towards you. Don't you need a little bit of time to respond? Oh crap, look at that, traffic coming right in my face. Yes, you can't see. Exactly, so if you're too close to the clouds, are you going to have enough time to respond and realize, wow, there's traffic over here, look at that. Not really. But that's why they want you on the regulations to stay a certain amount of distance between those clouds and you. So, it's 500 feet below the clouds, 1,000 feet above the clouds, and 2,000 distance from the clouds. So if there's a jet or IFR traffic coming out of those clouds at 200 knots or 250 knots, traveling at 4 miles per minute, Four miles per minute, that's 24,000 miles a minute, divide by 60. You're looking at about four seconds. Down the left side. So it pops out of the clouds and then within four seconds it's going to hit you if it's traveling at 250 knots. So that four second time lead is, you know, to realize, wow, look at this, this traffic, I can get avoided, boom, turn away from it. And same thing 2,000 distance, when the cloud is, you can come right straight at you, pop right out of the cloud and, and, and IFR traffic, and then you have time to respond. That's why they want you to maintain certain distance. What about an uncontrolled airspace? Cape May. We took off Cape, Cape May going to Norfolk. Uh-huh. So what what's the question? What's the cloud clearance and minimum visibility in uncontrolled airspace? Let's talk. Talk about daytime. No more night. Daytime? Yeah, minimum in uncontrolled airspace. It's actually not as restrictive. I don't even know. It says it's one mile. Yeah, it's one mile. One mile. They are clear clouds in one mile. When you're in uncontrolled airspace, it's not very likely at 500 feet you're going to have a jet flying at 250 knots. How likely is that? That's why in uncontrolled airspace they figure eight, you know? As long as you stay clear of clouds and one mile visibility, you can, you know, maintain the FR, no problem. Alright, let's put these here. And start the action.
77927, uh, Norfolk altimeter is 3037, squawk 4333. All right, squawking four triple three. Let's see what we got here. Seven seven nine two seven. Your radar contact four miles north of Fisherman's Island. Maintain VFR on course to Norfolk. All right, radar contact. He's got us. We're good. Now uh, let's see, we're landing runway 23, it's going to left turn, it's going to be a left turn to landmark. Well, we're actually going <clears> to <throat> go to the ramp, I'll make this airport bigger for you. Alright, you see over here it says fuel? Yes. Gonna be straight two three. He's probably gonna give us a left on that intersection here, which is Golf and Foxtrot. Golf and Foxtrot. But be ready. If we take too long to come in, we may end up taking runway three two left or Alpha over here to the. General Aviation Area. code and traffic return altitude zero one three. Beautiful. Excellent. This is zero one three again. Um, this is your squawk code on the uh -huh. And the TRA, which is traffic return altitude, is flight level zero one three, which is one thousand three hundred. So he's actually reading us at one thousand three hundred on the radar. The reason it is uh, two hundred feet off because this pressure altitude, okay? The altimeter setting is higher than standard. Standard altimeter setting is 2992. Since it's higher than standard, when you set 2992, it's going to show lower altitude. November 927, information alpha is now current. Wind 050 at 5, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 3, dew point minus 2, Norfolk altimeter 3036, expect runway 5. And 92723 is also available if you'd like it. Winds uh, light, 060 at 6, your choice. Roger. 
Okay, sounds good. And Central Commuter 317 to Center Maintain 3000. Pilot's discretion. Pilot's discretion 3000, Central Commuter 317. Okay, the weather changed. Now we got the wind from 050. At 5. What runway would you take now? What are my choices on the runway again? Uh, two, three, or five. On the Zulu ATIS, it was runway two, three. On the Alpha ATIS, it was runway five, because the wind shift. All the lights and everything. I could imagine a big yeah. airport. Yeah, it's a big airport, like like uh, I slip, you know. It's a really nice runway. It's going to be a pretty cool landing. I'm just wondering what this is right here on the lot. It's not a road. Oh, this is uh, a bridge going into a tunnel and then coming popping right out on the bridge so the boats can go across. The big so ship. there's a tunnel that goes underneath. Yeah, correct. Yeah, there's a road and then the road goes under. It turns into a tunnel and then pops again on the Get other side. Out of here. Cool. You never seen this before? Huh? You never seen this before? I know. <laughs> Just stay close to that, uh, you know. A little bit more left, you're drifting too far west. Uh, stay close to that road. Gotcha. So in case of an emergency, we can just walk out of the airplane without touching the water. I can actually pick up the airport right now, which is way out there. So from this angle, he may give us left traffic or right traffic or just radar vectors. Depends on how much traffic he has down there. We'll see. We'll know soon enough.
to switch the approaches. So flight plan, menu, select approach. We have to go to runway 5 now. Runway 5, high left. There you go. Enter, load it up. Bam. There's another tunnel, by the way. Look at that. I see it. This ship. You see, this is a Navy base here. Norfolk Navy base. Norfolk, Virginia, yeah. Yeah, so they got those big, big... Carriers. Carriers. Oh, so, you can't just take a freaking 150 tall ship underneath the bridge. They gotta make it a tunnel so the cars can go under. And that's what's happening. And I bet it took a long time to make this make this work, you know? Have you been in this uh, this part of the country? Uh, I drove past it, that's about it. Never, like, fly above and see everything from the top. No, huh? not like this. Yeah, that's good experience. Maybe a you know, commercial type of deal. Yeah, that's good experience, man. That's good stuff. Because, see, you can learn a lot of shit. Just, like, flying over. He was supposed to take a left downwind or right downwind. I think he's going to give us a left downwind. Uh, proceed on course. I'll just call the airport. Maybe he's going to give us a visual approach. And we'll just do left traffic pattern for five. Nine two seven in our left uh, downwind for runway two five runway uh, and VFR to send at your discretion. Contact me on the tower frequency one two zero point eight. Okay, one two zero point eight. That's the tower frequency. He may give us ground, which is one two one nine, but I doubt it. It's the same guy. It's two o'clock in the morning. But I got ground set up just in case. Alright, the whole landing checklist. Fuel selectors on. Seat belts are on. Let's put all the lights up. Cessna 927 runway 5, clear to land, wind 060 at 6. Okay, looks like we got the landing clearance. We are clear to land runway 5. Let's go to traffic pattern altitude, 1,000 feet, throttle back. If you want to take a break before landing, I can take the controls, you can, you know, get yourself set up with Kato the Cat. Kato the Cat! Welcome aboard! I bet that's the first time for him flying in a 1946 Luscom? Yes! What was the, uh, what was his trip like? Uh, usually just, oh, Spirit Airlines, uh, a few different ones. Okay, so basically, uh... Airbus and Boeing's, right? Yeah, big ones. Nothing that small. No. Ah, cool. Give yourself, you know, plenty of room, you know, to stay wide enough so you can turn into the runway. Beautiful, beautiful airport. Look at that. Very nice. So now, since we're landing to the northeast, we're going to end up making a right turn towards the ramp. Not a left turn. Look at this, beautiful. Five degrees, pitch down. Wings are level. Descending, speed. Thank you, Dinan, for such a good instrument. <laughs> We're gonna give him some good reviews. Stay off the brakes, stay on the rotor pedals, I'll let you have that landing and I'll assist you as necessary. Yeah, you might, because it's, uh, the bag's kind of in my way. The cat? Yeah. All right. I'll help you a little bit. Alright, I 
Let's get that throttle back up there, 2,000 RPM, nice and easy. No, 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 back in there, level off, we got nice and easy. You got back to your power altitude, right, 1,000. One more, 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 a little bit more, 2,000 RPM. More power. There you go, right there. Alright, now's a good time to activate vectors. It's the final, so we're gonna go flight plan. Activate approach. And activate vectors to final. Bam. Now, don't drift too much. You still see the airport? Yes. Keep yourself close. Let's go a little bit left. Stay within gliding distance from that airstrip. This was a quick flight. Look at this, 153. Beautiful. This is runway 14. You see that runway? Yes. That's close to you. You're on the left face to it. Uh -huh. This is runway 14. We're going further up to 5, which is all the way out. Got it. It's very easy to get confused. Yeah. All right. It's telling me to cross check my fuel gauge. Plenty of gas. No problem at all. Okay, looks like we're uh, a little bit drifting further. Let's go a little bit left, a little bit more left. You don't have to keep it so wide. And you're climbing, so let's go yeah, back. See the, see the altitude? Very nice. Now you're a beam your touchdown point. What do we do to beam the touchdown point? What does it mean? What do we do in order to start a descent? A beam our touchdown point. Speed. Yeah. Throttle back, 1500. And push the nose down for a descent. Very nice. Not too much, a little bit more throttle. A little bit, let me have it first. There you go, you're good. About 1600 is good. Very nice. Now you are waiting for the 60 degree point on standard traffic pattern. That's when we're going to turn base. So keep coming down. And look for a 60 degree point. 60 degree point from the runway, 60 degrees to the airport. From the runway, 60 degrees to the airplane. So look to your left. Keep an eye on the uh, runway. All right, you see the airport? Yes. It looks like about 60 degrees, isn't it? Yes. Go ahead and turn base. Keep the power in there, just like that. Very nice and calm here. Not as bumpy as uh, Cape May. Looking good. Keep that power in there. It's looking perfect. Just keep coming down towards the runway. A little bit more throttle, tiny bit. That's it right there. That's too much. Right there. Very nice. Beautiful. Look at those lights on the left. What do you have? Four lights. What are the colors? What do you see as far as colors on those lights? See the Pappy Precision Approach Path Indicator. You see that Pappy? I see one yellow. One white and three red. That means add a little bit of throttle. More throttle. A little bit more. There you go. What I want you 
gonna do is keep two reds and two whites all the way down. Keep a nice precision approach. Throttle back just a touch, because there you go, right there. That's a good spot setting. Push the nose down, keep coming down. Let me let me get the controls for a second, I wanna see if you get trim. Let's go for controls. Oh wow. Oh, no. Alright, let's go for a second. Alright, that's fair enough. Yeah, keep yes. coming down, keep coming down. If you're high, keep coming down. We got the throttle for you. Alright. There you go, right there. Two reds and two whites, all the way down. Stay on the center line, keep coming down. Keep coming down. Stay on the stick, I got your throttle. Kinda coming into your touchdown zone, right rudder. Right rudder, there you go. Don't be too stiff, hold it right there. Alright, round out and flare. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Alright, nice. Right rudder, left rudder. Nice and easy, throttle back to idle. I get the throttle. Let that tail sink in there. Nice and easy on the rudder. Watch yourself, going over Martin control. Seven, turn right, taxiway away, golf, taxi landmark via golf alpha, cross three two, stay with me. Okay, he gave us a right turn on golf. Stay on the rudder, nice and easy. I'll use your brakes as necessary here. Alright. Step on the right rudder. I got your throttle. See the yellow line? Uh huh. Follow the yellow line. You good? Yeah. Nice and easy. Your controls. I'll help you with the brakes if it gets too fast. All right. It's a little bit too fast. I'm helping you a little bit with the brakes. Excellent. Very nice. Good landing. Yeah, I, I couldn't hit so tight, I, I can't pull it all the way back. I think I have to wait afterwards. Is the cap on the way on the stick? That's what it is? At the end. Got it. Now you're just going to follow the blue lights. See the blue lights? That will take you all the way to the ramp. It's golf. And then we're going to cross from a 3-2 into alpha. And then go over to the ramp. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Ah, 2014. <laughs> you know, we're not in Florida yet, but I can kind of see the beginning of the year. it's a hurricane, it's rare to have, you know, rain, 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 rain for too long. It's just, you know, that time of the year in the winter in Florida, it's beautiful, sunny, 70, 75 degrees, just perfect weather. Oh yeah, I love January, November, December, January, March. Yep. Alright, beautiful, you can see the yellow line, just follow that yellow line, cross from a 3-2. The ramp. See that yellow line? Yep. Alright, that's full light. Beautiful. Little bit of throttle. Okay, runway 32 is clear on the right. Let's go a little bit left. Don't go into the runway, go left into the taxiway. You see Alpha yes. in a black square. 
see a black square. Watch, 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 watch. Nice and easy. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Okay, there you go, good. You see, um, black square with a yellow alpha on it? That's actually alpha. Now, see the sign that says FBO? Yes. We're gonna make a left. And that's where a landmark is. Still see the yellow line? Yes, perfect. The yellow line always keeps you out of trouble. Okay, there's a guy over there coming, so he may just park us in a certain spot. Let's see where he wants us. Alright, I would actually go to the right now. To the right? Yep. Oh, it's pretty bright here. Okay, there's your guy. Let's see what he wants us. Okay, you see he's pointing to the right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see which one you want. You want. Alright, let me Is see what he wants. Let me see. Right here. Oh, he wants left. us like that, I guess. Okay, that's where he wants you, that's where we're gonna put it. Welcome to Virginia! It smells like food. What? It smells like food. It smells like food, well, we'll see. Maybe for New Year's they're cooking some chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no soon enough, man. Alright, all electricals coming off. Alright, let's see how we do it.